All right, hello, Matt fans. Uh, this is actually a pretty significant day here. Today, we are going to talk about the quadratic formula. Okay, this is really, 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 really important um, for solving quadratic equations. All right. So let's introduce the formula. It's x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. All right, you have to memorize this. Okay, you got to memorize it. It's required. Okay, you have to do it. Um, the interesting thing about this formula is you see that minus b over 2a, or we actually call this opposite. I don't like minus. So whatever b is, you take the opposite. So it's opposite b over 2a. That is the x-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, and then this part right here, the b squared minus 4ac, well, we haven't really learned about it yet. We will. It's called the discriminant, but we haven't learned about it. Um, but we've seen it where you actually plug it into your calculator uh, to figure out the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Okay, but you have to memorize. Now, it goes to a full, uh, song. Uh, it goes to the, uh, the Notre Dame fight song. Um, that's the way I first... Actually, I first learned it to Fair Jaca, but it's, I think it's too complicated that way. The Notre Dame fight song fits much better with, uh, um, with the quadratic formula. So this is how it goes. X equals opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2 times A. Hey! Right? So that's it. That's the quadratic formula. Um, and the, you're always using the quadratic formula when you have problems like Y equals AX squared plus bx plus c. All right, that's where you're getting the a and the b and the c from. And I just want to make one point. If a is ever zero, you can't use this formula, which makes sense because if a was zero, that means you wouldn't have an x squared anymore. You would have just, it would be just linear, y equals bx plus c. That's why you can't use uh, you can't use this formula if a is zero, but you're not going to have to worry about that. You're only use it when you have an x squared anyway. All right. So that is a really, really, really important formula. So let's uh, let's do a couple of problems where we actually have to solve for it. All right, and we have to solve using the quadratic formula. So if I give you guys um, x squared plus five x minus six equals zero. Now, first of all. That's important. It has to equal zero. If it doesn't equal zero, you need to move move things over to get it equal to zero. Okay, you can't do this formula if it doesn't equal zero. All right, so it's important. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We have um, a is equal to one, b is equal to five, and c equals negative six. And then we let me just write the uh, I'll put the formula up in the corner here. x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. Okay, so there's your formula. And you are literally plugging everything in. So it's opposite of 5, which is negative 5. So x equals opposite of 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times 1. Now, what I would do as opposed to typing everything in my calculator right away, I would not do everything in one shot. What I would do is I would have my negative 5, I'd have my plus or minus, and I would figure out what this part inside the square root is. So you have 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 6. And again, you can type that in your calculator. That's okay. 25, but just you know, make sure you put lots of parentheses in there, right? Now it's 5 squared, because if it's a negative, make sure then you're going to square the negative. So it's 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 6. So this actually is plus 24. So you get 49. 
So this is the deal. Negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 49 over 2. That's what I want you to do with, you know, using whatever calculator, whatever, but I want you to get to this point. All right? Don't try to do everything in one shot because you're going to make a mistake. Now, this is just like the old days. All right? What you're going to do is, in your calculator, uh, actually, you're not even going to use your calculator because this is, there are two kind of problems I guess I can show you. One is, this is a perfect square. So do you guys agree the square root of 49 is 7? So my answer is going to be negative 5 plus or minus 7 over 2. So we have two problems. We have negative 5 plus 7 over 2 and negative 5 minus 7 over 2. And do each one of these separately. So negative 5 plus 7 is 2. So 2 over 2 is 1. That's one answer. Negative 5 minus 7 is negative 12 over 2 which reduces to negative 6. And those are my two answers. That's how I solve that problem. Okay, so I can put that one, if I want to test it, I can put the one back in here. One squared is one, plus five is six, six minus six is zero. That's good. Uh, negative six squared is 36, positive 36, um, minus 30. So 36 minus 30 is six, six minus six is zero. These both work. All right, but that's all you do is you just plug it into the equation, into the quadratic formula, and come up with an answer. All right, if it comes up with an exact answer, like 49, you know, square root of, you know, 25, or square root of 9, or square root of 121, something like that, then you're going to give me a nice, uh, basically, all these answers are going to require then no decimals, or have no decimals. Okay, so let's try another one here. Uh, 2x squared minus 5x equals 12. All right, now before you start the problem, remember it's got to equal 0. That's got to be in your heads when you're doing the problems, guys. So in order to equal 0, I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. So I get 2x squared minus 5x minus 12 equals 0. All right, so a is equal to 2. B is equal to negative 5, C equals negative 12. And we plug it in. So X equals opposite of B, so it's 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 12 all over 2 times 2. Okay, so 5 plus or minus, and again, you can put this in your calculator if you want, that negative 5 squared, so just make sure you use parentheses. So negative 5 squared minus 4, parentheses, 2, close parentheses, open parentheses, negative 12, close parentheses, equals 121. Hey, hey, over 4. Well, 121 is a perfect square, so I'm going to say no decimals. All right, because it's the square root of 121 is 11. So x equals 5 plus or minus 11 over 4. So I've got two problems, guys. x equals 5 plus 11 over 4, and x equals 5 minus 11 over 4. So 5 plus 11 is 16 over 4, which is 4. 5 minus 11 is negative 6 over 4, which is negative 3 halves. There we go. Those are my two answers. Okay, uh, let's try another one. Okay, again, we're going to do, um, you know, same, same stuff. Um, 6x squared uh, equals 13x plus 5. So, I think it's a good habit, because we're going to use it later on, is to keep this positive keep that 6 positive. So I'm going to move this stuff over to the other side. Okay, So I'm going to get 6x squared, I'm going to subtract 13x, and subtract 5 from both sides. So I get 6x squared minus 13x minus 5 equals 0. Now I can solve the problem. 
So I get x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times 6 times negative 5 all over 2 times a. So it looks, you know, it looks kind of bigger and everything, but just type in uh, thir negative 13 squared. In fact, sometimes if you just type in 13 squared, because oh, you know it's always going to be positive as opposed to typing negative 13 squared. So 13 squared minus 4 parentheses, 6 close parentheses, open parentheses, negative 5 close parentheses, enter. So it's 13 plus or minus the square root of 289 over 12. And I want to test to see if 289 is a perfect square, so I'm going to take the square root of that, and it is. So x equals 13 plus or minus the square root of 289 is 17 over 12. So then I'm going to get 13 plus 17 over 12 and 13 minus 17 over 12. So 13 plus 17 is 30. And you reduce that. You can use your calculator, however you want to do it. But uh, 6 goes into each one of those. So 6 goes into 35 times. 6 goes into 12 twice. There's one answer. 13 minus 17 is negative 4. And that reduces to negative 1 third. Those are your two answers. 5 halves and negative 1 third. All right. Okay, so let's do a couple problems where it doesn't come out so friendly. Um, how about 2x squared minus uh, 7x minus 1 equals 0. Well, I made it nice for you. It said it's equal to 0 already. So we have x. Well, first of all, our a is 2. b is negative 7. And c is negative 1. So x equals opposite of b, or 7, plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared, minus 4 times 2 times negative 1, all over 2 times 2. So we have 7 plus or minus the square root of 49. Okay. Uh, well, we can again, we can do all this in our calculator. This one's actually pretty easy. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, times negative 1 is positive 8, all over 4. So x equals 7 plus or minus the square root of 57 over 4. And you should know that 57 is not a perfect square. So we're going to use our calculators. And just like you did back in the day, guys, it's going to be 7 plus the square root of 54 over 4. And x equals 7 minus the square root of 54 over, or 57, sorry, 57 over 4. Okay, so 7 plus square root of 57. And remember, hit equals whenever you do the top. That's so important. So that uh, gives us 14.55 divided by 4. So the first answer is 3.64. And 7 minus the square root of 57 is negative 0.55 divided by 4 is negative 0.14. And those are our two answers. Okay? In decimal form, round to the nearest hundredth. All right, let's try another one here. Um, let's see. Uh, 3x squared equals 7x um, minus 1. All right, so same deal, guys. got to be equal to 0. That is huge. Ooh, if you turn upside down, it's a scary face. Hmm, or sideways. Hmm. Um, all right, so we're going to subtract 7x and add 1 to both sides. So 3x squared minus 7x plus 1 equals 0. So a is 3, b is negative 7, and c is 1. So x equals opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared minus 4 times 3 
times 1 all over 2 times 3. So you get 7 plus or minus, and then again, you know, we can do all this in your calculator, so it's 7 squared, really negative 7 squared, but I know it's going to be positive, um, minus 4 parentheses, 3 close parentheses, open parentheses, 1 close parentheses, uh, equals, so that gives us 37. Square root of 37 over 6. Okay, not a perfect square, so we type in our calculator. Uh, we're going to do 7 plus the square root of 37 over 6, and 7 minus the square root of 37 over 6. So 7 plus the square root of 37 equals, divided by 6, I get 2.18, and 7 minus the square root of 37 is 0.92, divided by 6 is 0.15. There we go. Those are our two answers. Okay, so the quadratic formula is really pretty easy um, to use. Now, just a couple variations here, real quickly. Uh, if I give you um, 9x squared um, minus 4x equals 0. All right, well, again, if you remember, it's it's always ax squared plus bx plus c. So I don't have a c here. That's okay. You just say a is equal to 9, b is equal to negative 4, c equals 0. That's okay. Just going to plug it in. So x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times 9 times 0 all over 2 times 9. So x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of, well, this really cancels out, right? It's 0. So it's really negative 4 squared, which is 16, over 18. The square root of 16, it's a perfect square. So x equals 4 plus or minus 4 over 18. And then you got two problems. 4 plus 4 over 18. 4 minus 4 over 18. And because it's a perfect square, because no square roots, you can um, just do this by hand. So 4 plus 4 is 8 over 18. And so the answer is going to be 4 ninths. And this one's um, 4 minus 4 is 0 over 18, which is 0. So those are your two answers, math fans. 4 ninths and 0. All right. Um, let's try one. If you have uh, 3x squared... Uh, minus 5. And we're going to go this route. 3x squared equals 5. <clears throat> now I know a lot of you guys, um, you know what to do here. Uh, so I'm going to actually show you two ways to do this problem because I think it's really important to understand both ways to do it. Um, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So 3x squared minus 5 equals 0. And then I'm going to um, use the quadratic formula. So a is 3. B is 0 because there's no x term, and C is negative 5. So x equals opposite of B. So 0, really, you don't even need this negative here. x equals 0 plus or minus the square root of 0 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 5 all over 2 times 3. So we get x equals plus or minus the square root of, and again, this is out of there, the 0 squared. So it's really saying in your calculator, negative 4, parentheses, 3, close parentheses, open parentheses, negative 5, close parentheses, and you wind up getting 60 all over 6. Now, please don't say 60 over 6. Don't reduce that because you can't. One's under the square root, one's not. So you're going to do put this in your calculator. You're going to take the square root of, because it's not a perfect square, Square root of 60, uh, so let's write our two answers here. It's square root of, positive square root of 60 over 6 and negative square root of 60 over 6. So the first one gives us 7.74596, uh, blah, 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 divided by 6. So you get 1.29. The other one's going to be negative of that. It's the same thing except negative of it. But you can type in your calculator too and you're going to get negative 1.29. And those are your two answers for that problem. Okay. Now, 
I'm going to show you another way because we've been spending all this time on the quadratic formula. And remember what we did the other day? 3x squared equals 5. Isn't that the square root method? Because there's no other, if there's no x term with this, it's just x squared, you can actually do this. Divide by 3, x squared equals 5 thirds. Take the square root, x equals plus or minus the square root of 5 thirds. And if you typed in 5 divided by 3 in your calculator, and then you took the square root of that number, you get 1.29 and negative 1.29, because it's plus or minus, which is exactly the same as that. Okay? So that just kind of showed you can use the square root method or the quadratic formula, but you can only use the square root method if you have uh, just an x squared to solve for, and that includes something like this, right? x plus 5 squared equals 25. If you have an, an x, basically saying x squared, if you have something, a term squared like that, you can um, solve it using the square root method. All right, but the quadratic formula works for everything. All right, um, last problem I want to show you guys. If I get x squared um, plus 3x plus 6 equals 0. Okay, it's all set up in nice form. So we can just, that's, you know, of course our a is 1, b is 3, c is 6. So x equals opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of 3 squared, minus 4 times 1, times 6, all over 2 times 1. So we get negative 3, plus or minus the square root of, and again we can put all this together, it's just 9 minus 24. That gives us negative 15 over 2. Uh oh, big problem here. We have the square root of negative 15. Okay, and it's with an x. So remember, if it was square, if I just said, "Hey, what's the square root of negative 15?" You would say mm, that's undefined. But now it's with an x, and it's saying x equals negative. It's basically saying x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 15 over 2. Okay, so if you have a square root of a negative number and you're solving for an equation, you actually write no solution. All right, so remember that it's no solution if you have a negative radical and you're trying to solve for a variable. All right, so anyway, that is the quadratic formula, and um, hope you guys learned something from that. And uh, you know, definitely the song helps kind of memorize a little bit the Notre Dame fight song. And I uh, hope that helps. All right, Matt fans, have a good day.